classical mechanics, we're working on work energy. And so we have to do this important problem. And we're doing this problem as a way to practice work energy. And because we're going to do it again later when we get into Lagrangian mechanics. And that's going to be awesome. But that way we'll have something to compare it to. We'll say, hey, remember we did this problem? And you'll say, no, we don't remember. And I'll say, here's the video. See, haha, -ha, we did it. OK. So the problem is this. There's a, there's a, I guess it's a bowl. I mean, they, a lot of times it's ice on a bowl or something. It's a circular curved surface with a mass on there. And the mass has no friction. And, and we want to find uh, at what point, if you give it a little tap, it goes bleh, and it starts sliding down, it's going to come off of the surface. And we want to find out where it comes off the surface of the bowl, where it's going and just comes off. It's not going to stay on it all the way down. It's a tough problem, okay? But we're going to do, do it anyway. So let's start off with Newton's second law in polar coordinates. So I've, already, I've used that angle theta. I don't know why. So we're going to use polar coordinates in, in terms of theta. Um, so if you remember, we have uh, in polar coordinates, I can say uh, the net force, I can break it into the r direction, which this is the r direction, and the theta direction. And you could do this without that. Trust me, you could. But we're going to do it. OK. So if you don't remember, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. So in the r direction, we have r double dot minus r theta dot squared, where the double dot means that's a bad. Look at that. It's all crooked and everything. I like it when it's straighter. r double dot minus r theta dot squared. That looks a little bit better. OK. So this is the second derivative of the r coordinate, how far it is from here. That's r, right? We have polar coordinates. We have two variables, r and theta. And then this is theta dot, the derivative, the angular velocity, right? So a one dot means one derivative with respect to time. Two dots is two derivatives, second derivative with respect to time. And then in the theta direction, I forgot. Oh, it's two r dot theta dot plus r theta double dot. Oh, and then you the mass. OK, so that's Newton's second law in polar coordinates. I wrote that really big. I don't know why. So let's use our forces to find this. And why would we do that? We're doing polar coordinates because uh, in the r direction, the r velocity is 0 because it's, it's fixed to the surface for now. Okay. So I have two forces. I have the downward gravitational force, mg. And then I have the normal force that way. And we're talking about while still in contact with the surface. So if that's the case, let me just write over here before I forget. AR is R double dot minus R theta dot squared. A theta is 2 R dot theta dot plus R theta double dot. So I, I think that's too big, and I want to use that space. Okay. So let's write down Newton's second law in the r direction. So first of all, what is r double dot? If it's confined to the surface, r is equal to r. That's the radius of that. So r dot, r double dot are both 0. So that's 0. So in the r direction, I can say f net r is going to be the normal force, which I don't know. And then I have. That's the angle theta, so I have a component of the gravitational force, minus m, it's a huge minus, minus mg cosine theta, right? The component of the gravitational force in the r direction is minus mg cosine theta. And although this stays in the r direction, it stays at a constant r value, that doesn't mean the acceleration is 0 because of that term right there, right? So we do have that. So r is r. But I have this is equal to negative m r theta dot squared. Right? That's just Newton's second law in the, in the polar coordinates. You could say also this is m uh, v squared over r. It's the same thing. Now, in the theta direction, let's just write it down for completeness, f net theta. What force do we have? Now I have a component of the gravitational force. It's going to be mg sine theta. And that's going to be equal to m 
times this, right, the acceleration in the r direction. But this term, r dot, is zero, so I have r theta double dot. Now, if, if you just think, okay, what, do we, what happens when the object loses contact with the surface? When this leaves the surface, what's true? Well, when it leaves the surface, there's no longer a normal force. And you could think in this case, you could imagine that as this gets uh, larger, then the normal force is going to be negative, right? So if that would mean the case of it moving all the way down here, you'd have to actually pull it in. So this is going to transfer from pushing it off the surface to pulling it into the surface. And if there's nothing holding on to it, when it has to pull in, it can't do that and, the, and it loses contact. So we want to find out where the normal force is, goes to zero. So we want to set this, find out where the normal force is equal to zero, but I don't know theta, as, theta dot as a function of time. That's my problem. And you could say, oh, well, hey, you could, you could find it from here. And you can, okay. Um, but we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to use the work energy principle, because this is a difficult differential equation. We're going to use the work energy principle to find theta dot. So remember that work is the change in kinetic energy plus a change in potential energy. And we're going to use a system of the Earth in there. So we're going to have a gravitational potential energy, and we're going to have a kinetic energy. So we need to find the potential energy. It's going to be mgy, and we can pick wherever y is equal to 0. So let's pick y is equal to 0 right here. Then the y value is going to give me my, my potential. But right here, I'm going to say y1, u1, the initial potential, is going to be mgr, right? Because that's the height above that. What's the height right here? u2 is going to be equal to mgr cosine theta. Because look, if I take the cosine of theta, I'm right there. That's my height right there. So that's going to be my change in potential. Now, up here, I'm going to say T1 is equal to 0. So down here, what's the kinetic energy? Well, the kinetic energy, T2, is going to be 1 half m r squared theta dot squared. That's my kinetic energy term, right? Because this is r theta dot is velocity. If I square it, I get the, the actual velocity. So if I put this all together, I have 0 equals the change in kinetic energy, which is going to be the final. 1 half m r squared theta dot squared minus 0 plus the change in potential, which is going to be mg2, mg r cosine theta minus mg r, final minus initial. But you see right here, I can use this to get an expression for theta dot and plug it. I don't even need theta dot. I need theta dot squared. I don't even need theta dot squared. I need r theta dot. So let's solve this for r theta dot. Um, mass cancels in all the terms. Let's just move that to the other side. So I have 1 half r, r theta dot squared. I did a little trick right there. You like that? Uh, and then this is going to be equal to gr. No, it's going to be gr times 1 minus cosine theta. Right? So if I move this to the other side, it's negative. That's positive, And then I factor out the gr. And boom, R cancels, multiply by 2. I'm going to run out of room. R theta dot squared is 2G1 minus cosine theta. Now let's put that in up into that expression. That's all I need, right? I just need that. So we just used the work energy to get the velocity. That's all we did. So I'm going to erase that. I'm going to erase that. I'm going to erase that and that. So up here, I have, I'm going to solve this for n. I get n equals mg cosine theta minus m r theta dot squared. And then for r theta dot squared, I'm going to put in this. So I get n equals mg cosine theta minus m 2 g 1 minus cosine theta. And remember, we want to find where n is equal to 0. So I'm just going to set this equal to 0. If I do that, I can cancel the mg, and I get 2 
g1 minus cosine theta equals cosine theta. Nope, that g canceled. Uh, so I can divide both sides by 2. I get 1 minus cosine theta equals 1 half cosine theta. I can add co 1 to cosine theta to both sides, and I get 1 equals cosine theta plus 1 half cosine theta is 3 halves cosine theta. 3 halves cosine theta. And then theta would be the inverse cosine of 2 thirds. So that's the angle at which the normal force goes from pushing that way to pushing this way. So that's the point where it lose contact. Now you should notice a couple of interesting things. Number one, um, it doesn't depend on how big the sphere is. It doesn't depend on R. Um, the other thing that's really, I think, interesting, it doesn't depend on G. So if you did this on the moon versus the Earth, it would be the same angle. Now that did assume, this is kind of weird, it did assume an initial velocity of zero, but if the velocity is zero, it's just going to stay there. So, okay, so there you go. We, like I said, we're going to do this problem again. We're going to come back and I'm going to say, do you remember that problem? And you're going to say, no, I don't remember that problem. I'm going to say, aha, we did it. And I'm going to send you the link to this video. Okay, the end.